Hello, and welcome back to another My Porch Prints video tutorial. My name's Kaylin, and today we're going to be putting together a pregnancy journal. So to begin, I went ahead and printed out all of my pregnancy journal pages on one side, and then flipped them over and ran them through the printer again with our French Rabbits journal pages on the other side. So today I'm going to be doing a spiral binding method for my journal. And we're going to be using this cinch machine um, to make that process a little bit easier. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll be learning a little bit together. This is my first time doing this. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to help you out a little bit if you have this machine as well. So to start, um, I'm going to cut off the border from around all of my papers. If you happen to have a printer that prints borderless, you can skip that step. But if you're going to be doing the spiral binding method, then you'll want to cut all your pages in half. I've also gone ahead and put the papers in an order that makes the most sense to me. Um, as always, you can put your journal together however you like, whatever makes the most sense. Um, I have mine starting out with kind of finding out you're pregnant, being able to put a couple pictures in, um, prenatal appointments, keeping track of all of that stuff. And remember, you can always print out pages multiple times. So if you're like, oh, there's only one page for prenatal appointments, you can keep printing them out for how men, however many you have. And then it also goes through, there's a lot of good stuff in here, um, milestones in your pregnancy, um, team boy or team girl, if that's something that you want to do, um, ideas for baby names. And then as we move closer to the back of the journal, there's these little check-ins. So one month check-in, two month check-in, three month check-in, all the way through nine months of pregnancy. And I put those towards the back because that made the most sense to me. Um, but feel free to arrange it however you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and trim my border, cut my papers in half, and then when we come back, I'll show you how we can use the cinch machine. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this cinch machine. So I've gone ahead and cut all of my pages in half, and right now, because we trimmed our borders and everything, our measurements are closer to eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. So we're going to go ahead and put this in on the long side, kind of slide it all the way in until it hits the back of the machine. And then there's a lever up here, it's out of frame, but um, we're going to pull down and punch. And then there's this slider on the left side. I'm going to pull that all the way out until it can't go any further. And then move our page down until it hits the bottom. Push it close into the machine again. And then here on the side, I'm going to turn this just slightly so you can see, there is this little alignment peg. And you can push that down until it locks into place in one of the holes and that'll kind of keep things from shifting. And then what we want to do is adjust our pegs. So if you just punch again without moving any of the pegs, you'll end up with kind of a half moon crescent cutout on the edge of your page that doesn't look very nice. And this machine actually comes with a little instruction set that tells you which peg you can pull. And so our paper is close to eight inches, so we're gonna pull the four peg. If yours is closer to eight and a half, you'll pull the number five peg. So we'll go ahead and pull that out and then we can punch again. And you'll want to make sure that you reset this because we're going to be punching more papers. And if you forget, then you'll end up missing a hole down here. Lift our little alignment peg and then there we go. So let's go ahead and do that one more time together. Push it all the way in, pull down the lever, pull out the slider, adjust all the way down, put down our alignment peg, pull the number four peg, and punch again. And then reset. And you can see what we end up with is our pages that perfectly line up with the same number of holes, everything nice and neat. So I'm going to go ahead and punch the rest of my pages. This machine can do up to 20 pages of regular paper, not cardstock, at a time. Um, so this actually makes it go pretty quickly. And then what we're going to do is work on our covers. And once we're done with that, we'll come back to this machine again and use our spiral binding. So let's talk about our cover. I'm going to be using chipboard today. Um, we should have a link down below uh, to our Amazon shop and you should be able to find this there. And so to begin, we took one long piece of chipboard 
and cut that in half. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim a little bit off of this. Now, I learned the hard way. <laughs> if your printer doesn't print borderless, you're going to need to trim a little bit off and that'll make your pages smaller. And so the first time I actually did um, a initial run where I made my cover and realized that when I went to punch it, I had an extra hole because it was a little bit longer than my pages. And so when I tried to line them up, it wasn't lining up right. So if your printer does not print borderless, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you trim your covers. So let's go ahead and do that. To start, we're gonna measure in about a quarter of an inch. That's how much I wanna take off to try and make things more even. And then we're gonna go over to the other side and do the same thing. And I've gone ahead and done that on my other piece as well. So what we're gonna do is grab our guillotine or guillotine, I think I said that wrong. And we're gonna trim off that edge. All right, that looks pretty good. So I went ahead and printed out one of the printable papers from the French Rabbits kit. And we're gonna be using this for our front and back cover. I have another sheet here. And I didn't have to print double-sided on this because we're gonna be covering it up anyway. So to start, we're gonna flip this over and pick something to be the top. These are non-directional. Um, I just like having the rows at the top of mine. And then we're gonna line this up in the middle of our paper and then glue it down. And I'm going to be using Fabri-Tac glue, which is also linked in our Amazon shop. So again, just trying to keep this as centered and straight as possible. And then I'm gonna be using a bone folder to help with creasing and smoothing things down. Again, this should be linked in our Amazon shop. And then what we're gonna do is come in from each corner as straight on as we can and give it a little crease. The key here on this cover is gonna to be to keep everything tight and close to the chipboard. And then we're gonna fold each of the sides. And I'm not gluing anything down yet. You can see here, I'm really working to pull this in nice and tight so that we don't have any strange bubbling or creasing. All right, so now it's time to glue stuff down. Start over on one corner, kind of just lifting it up or sneaking the glue bottle underneath a little. And then getting this edge, make sure that you get kind of close to each edge so that it doesn't pop up. And get under here as well. That is it for the outside portion of our cover. I'm gonna go ahead and do our other one and then I'll come back and show you the inside part of the cover. For our inside covers, I went ahead and printed off more papers from that French Rabbit kit. And we're going to use a corner rounding punch. I have this set on the medium setting um, to just round these edges and make them look a little nicer. Oh, and by the way, these were printed on um, cardstock so that they're a little bit firmer. I just love how that looks. If you were ambitious enough, you could also do that to the pages in your journal. Um, I'm not, <laughs> so I'm just gonna do it for my inside covers. All right, and then we're just gonna go back in with glue all the way around this, stick it down and smooth it. And we're gonna move on to the last portion of our cinch machine. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna to need to punch these um, holes in the side. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. 
just with our covers. Um, be aware that since this is chipboard, um, it's thicker, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get through. Um, so you might need just a little bit of muscle to get it done. But same concept, push it in and punch. Slider, slider out all the way. And then bring this down. Remove that um, four peg and align our alignment peg. There we go, that kind of helps lock it in place. And then punch again. And then we'll reset. All right, so I told you guys that this was gonna be a bit of us learning together. And so I realized as I was um, putting my covers together for our spiral spine, um, that you're supposed to put the back cover on top of the front cover and it's supposed to fold around the journal to help hide the seam on the spiral. But you can see if we do that, then we end up with our inside cover on the outside. And you would think, oh, maybe you can just flip it upside down, but then the holes actually don't align properly. Let's see if I can kind of show you, they, they don't line up right. Um, so <laughs> I've gotten really, really good at making covers for this journal, as you can see. I went ahead and made up another um, cover, and we're gonna go ahead and use that instead of this one. So, it's gonna be same thing as before, just slightly different. So instead of going on top like this, we're just gonna flip it so that this is facing um, inside, and then we're gonna be punching along this side. And that way, when we come around like this, you can see we'll end up with the right side out. So. We do it so that you don't have to. <laughs> All right. So same as before. Push our little slider out. Move this down. And then again, don't forget to move that number four peg. And then I'm going to use our alignment peg here on the side to hold things in place. There we go. And punch again. <laughs> That's our little dog running around. Okay. So now you can see that these holes line up nicely. And then when we flip this around, it'll actually go to the back and will look nice. So we're gonna move on and actually go to the spiral binding part of this. All right, so for our spine, we're going to start by counting the number of holes in our journal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 on, the, on mine. Um, if your journal is just slightly bigger, you may have 16, just make sure that you count them all. And then we're going to count down on our um, spiral spine here as well. Counting on these little, the skinny side, not the fat side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then once you get to 15, you'll go to the next one down on the fat side and um, cut that off. I've just got a little pair of wire cutters that I'm gonna use for that. And then what we're gonna do, this comes with a little kind of holder on the side, and these um, thicker, bigger sides are gonna be the part that slides in there. And it holds it just like that so that we can put our pages on. Now, as a reminder, again, the front and the back cover are going to be at the top of your stack of papers. So we're actually gonna start from the bottom And again, ending with our front cover and then our back cover flipped over. All right, so now we finally get to do the cinching part. I'm gonna move this off of the little hooks here on the side. We're gonna come around to this side and you wanna make sure that you turn this. <laughs> the first time I tried this, I was trying to press it down like this. That's obviously not gonna work. So um, turn it so that it's um, more vertical and then slide it in here. Again, just kind of pushing it back 
against the back edge. And you're gonna wanna be careful when we press down, um, this can get your fingers, so just make sure that you're holding somewhere on the outside of the journal. And then here, I'm going to adjust for the thickness of our wire. Ours is around a 9 16 inch wire, um, and we wanna set our settings to about a half, between a half inch and 5 eighths. And to adjust, you can just turn this dial, press and turn. So we're gonna make sure that that's where we want it. And now we're ready to cinch. So again, using that big lever, it's kind of out of frame here, um, but it's the same one that we were using for the punching of the holes. It's down. It looks like this edge here was sticking out just a little bit. I'm gonna shift down a little and see if we can get that one in there. All right, let's see how we did. So when we're all done here, I've got a little pair of needle nose pliers, and this is optional, but if you just wanna bend the edges in a little bit, sometimes they don't get quite as tightly cinched in there. a little adjustment and then there's also these little end pieces if those bother you or you're worried about getting poked um, you can use your pair of needle nose pliers to kind of bend those in or another option would be to just trim them a little bit which is what I think I'm gonna do this one's just a little longer than I want it to be okay. so there we go and then lastly we're just gonna flip our back cover over and you can see it kind of helps cover the uh, seam there and just looks a little bit nicer. All right, so that is our base for our journal. We have our simple cover. I'll flip through this just a little bit so you can see how it looks. And this would be perfectly fine as is if you just want a practical note-taking journal that's simple and beautiful. Um, but we're going to do a little bit of embellishing here in a minute <laughs> with some decorating. And you guys can just follow along with me and hopefully you'll get some ideas for decorating your journal. So let's go ahead and get started.
All right, that is it for this pregnancy journal. I hope that you guys got some ideas watching that. This journal is actually going to be really special to me because we just found out that we are expecting, which is super exciting, our first child. So I'm going to do a quick flip through of this journal and you'll see some pictures of me and our little baby in it. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed following along.